All right. What is going on, people? It is episode two of the Expanse A Telltale series. Hi, I am John Boltina. I big Expanse fan, uh, but I'm also a the game master for, if you look over here, Abrax Precipice, where we play the Expanse role-playing game. We've been doing it for over two years now. And so as the game master of that and creating like original storyline for two years that's interactive for the players, um, I, I'm pretty well versed in, in Expanse lore. Um, I read all the books. I read all the all the stuff. I, you know, whatever there is, I poured over it. Uh, and I'm a big fan of the series and there's a lot of cool little like tidbits here and there. And so with so many new people coming in, I want to do these commentaries to kind of go over the game as it's played and kind of just look at like, you know, what, what, what's, what are these things? What's going on in here? Um, some people are, you know, they're kind of not so, um, they're new to, the, new to it. They're not sure what's going on here. Uh, they, they want to see kind of like what, um, what's what they're kind of thrown into this world. So I want to give you guys kind of up to date. And also if you're a hardcore expanse fan, maybe I'll, I'll show you some of the weird new little things that are kind of in there. Um, but I will say, uh, I don't have mentioned before, before I go on, uh, thank you for watching. It's fantastic. Uh, it always helps subs help. Um, but the best way to support what I do and my love of the expanse is through, uh, our Patreon. Um, we do a, there it is. Uh, we have our own Patreon for our show, our Express Best, and we're back in, um, we will be back in September on the 12th with all new episodes. Um, we're very excited about it. The crew's excited about it. Uh, we're further, we, we kind of follow along with the book series. So each one of our, our quote unquote phases, we'll call them seasons maybe, uh, lines up with one of the respective nine books. And we're about to start five, which is a really epic uh, part of this, the tale. So but that's a great way to help us out and help me out and keep me up doing this. Um, so I, I did play through the episode last night when I debuted. I wanted to play through it, just kind of, you know, go through it and have a fun time with it. And it's good. I, I like this one a lot more than the first one. Um, uh, the first one was great, but this there was a lot of world building and establishment, but this one had a... Uh, it gets a little Metal, Metal Gear Solid, we'll say. Well, it gets a little Metal Gear Solid, I'll say, I, and uh, I liked it. Um, I feel like there was an escalation in this one. So and I'm in my I'm in my flight suit. This is my expanse cosplay, just some schlub on like, you know, whatever station with his flight suit, name tag, uh the different stations he's worked with, kind of etc. Pure and clean action, my Tyco station hat, which is one of my favorite pieces I've gotten. Um but uh yeah I'm gonna go ahead and kick off here um with uh my storyline here. Um let me go ahead and pull up my episode two and I'm gonna go ahead and restart it actually. Let me, uh, let me jump. Let me go ahead and pull over my display so you guys can see what's going on here. There we go. Okay, there, there it's display. All right, cool. And let me go ahead and make sure uh, pull up, restarts episode two. I think I'm doing my save slot one, which is my main, which is my main slot. So I did, say, I did, uh, and there'll be spoilers for episode one by all means here. Spoilers for this episode. Uh, I will thank, yeah, thanks, Aqua Punk is great. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. I, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a good way to get kind of into the, uh, the Expanse universe. Um, it's not terribly, um, they, they, they give you, they give you plenty to work with. Um, I really don't think it was too, it, they, they did a good job with it. I'm, I'm actually honestly very happy with it. Um, and, uh, I'm like, let me double check something real quick here. Um, oh, I see what I did. Okay. Check something. Oh, there it is. All right, I'll fix it later. All right, cool. Well, let me go ahead and get started here, and I will uh, load this up. Um, yeah, I'll well, start it over. And I, you know, I, I this is my main my main playthrough and everything, so I don't mind doing the choices over again. Please, uh, Kamina, don't do this. <sighs> Take him to the brig. All right, so they're throwing the juice in there. They're getting juiced up. Oh, he's, pumping, he's pumping directly in the Cut veins. It. Oh, he cunts! Oh, 
remember Khan got shot in the last episode. Got Maya, Rain, Arlen. How long until the pirates are back in range? Hour, maybe two, depending on burn. Same as last time. And the time before that. And the tin time before that. How are you doing? I'm not the one we need to worry about. Right. I think Khan's tough. Don't Khan, tell her Khan's I said a tough this, son of a bitch. but Khan's the toughest person I know. I think the bullet just made her mad. Tough or not, she's going to need help soon. You'll figure something out. I know you will. Motherfuckers! Shouldn't be possible! ETA, eight minutes! They must have increased their burn this time. <sighs> Don't these Pashangwalas rest? Humans rest. Pirates? Fucking animals. We need to do something about your arm. Virgil has the med bay prepped and ready. It's fine. Hardly hurts anymore. We're outgunned and nearly out of fuel. Unless we come up with a plan to shake them soon, infection's gonna be the least of my oh, problems. Yeah. Let's see here. So I can say, okay, what should we do? Or what would Cox do? Cox, we just put away. Fuck Cox, you know, we kind of, you know, I feel like that's a shitty option to say. Let's go with uh, what should we do. What do you think we should do? What do I think we should do? Besides find ourselves a captain who knows how to make decisions? I was asking your opinion. It is your arm, lady. My opinion is that there is no good option. Whatever you choose will be wrong. And it's your fucking job to choose. Right, Khan. Khan's the, Khan is the bomb. Coordinates, 8214. What are we looking at? Fuck if I know. It's a ship's graveyard. Debris field. Caught in orbit around that body. There's nothing registered there. How do you know? Back when I was MCRN, there were reports of a proxy battle right around yeah. here with UNN forces. Never confirmed, but seemed legit. Or much more likely, it's some solar backscatter. I do like Khan too. Radiation cluttering. Khan's great. Any other fucking thing? Here. How big was it? Let's see how big the battle was. How large was this battle? All right. Large enough for a pissant ensign like me to hear about it. I'd guess nearly a dozen ships. It's weird. She's an ensign. New plan. We run for cover in there. I'll talk about that here in a second. Won't work, boss man. If we, if we break their lock, they'll be able to track our drive plume. There won't be a drive plume. We burn hard for here first, then cut engine and turn into orbit. Let it carry us around until we land in the debris. Slingshot, fuck yes! All right, so there, there's a lot going on here. I gotta, I gotta comment on. So first off, I'm gonna t I, I have to go back to my big quip, which is that uh, Khan has a uh, Khan has a nose ring, uh, which is something I really don't like that uh the pilot especially has a nose ring uh piercings because when you when you hit high g's as they're doing here um it like pulls on stuff and uh that nose ring if they're doing like a like a four or five g burn that nose ring weighs five times as much um so it'll it'll rip out basically is what it comes down to especially if you have if you have a sudden burst so like uh, and the show went over that explicitly with uh bobby and ava sorella where like bobby was like you need to take off your necklace and your earrings because we're gonna go fast and when we do uh that you it'll you know that earring is gonna start weighing like you know six pounds suddenly um so there's that two um the uh they're they're so they're when they burn so you have to realize when you when you actually burn you're you're actually accelerating you're not just going like a certain speed you're accelerating um because the ship will keep on going the same speed even after you cut thrust um so the thrust is just acceleration. That's the linear acceleration. Um, so when they when they cut, what what they're doing is they're doing these harder burns that are like usually, uh, 
two two G. So that's like two times the force of gravity. So that's what's 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 gravity. It's nine. Is it nine point two? I always forget. It's nine point two, nine point eight, whichever one it is. It's that times two. So it'd be eighteen or nineteen point whatever. So they're going pretty fast. Um, and the problem when, when you do high G burns is that you you basically weigh more. So that means that like everything on your body weighs more suddenly. So your bones weigh more, your eyeballs weigh more, all the liquid weighs more. So you have to like, you have to compensate for that. So what they do is they pump them full of the juice. So that's that stuff, that's that stuff coming off the chair. And the juice is a combination of like, um, it, it, it's there to prevent people from having strokes. And um, it's there to also like, it's there to prevent them from having strokes. So it keeps like blockages from happening. Um, it also has amphetamines to keep them awake and aware. Um, they usually kind of tunnel vision. It's also pretty painful, um, not just because of the injection, but because like it's a lot of drugs to take suddenly. Um, and we actually have used these in uh, combat situations. Uh, they use them for like, fighter pilots and everything like that too. It's caffeine, some amphetamines, some uh, anti-stroke drugs, stuff like that. Um, it's there to just make sure like your 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 blood keeps on flowing. Um, because what happens is like your the blood pressure pushes back on you. Um, so like if I'm if I'm laying down and I'm going and I'm going that way, my blood will push on the back here, and you don't want to have it catch a catch a part of your brain, for example, that'll um, that'll burst. You don't want to get an aneurysm or something like that. So you have to keep the blood flowing. Um, one thing, uh, and then Maya is Maya talks about being an ensign, which is kind of interesting because Maya mentioned being a Martian Marine, but ensign's usually a rank. I believe usually a rank you see in navies. Uh, usually it's like a a low ranking officer so it's kind of interesting to think about like I, I i'm trying to figure out what they what they did with maya because my there's a lot of parts of Maya that are kind of inconsistent um and i'm really curious about all that um and then uh khan's injury under g-forces would be really deadly actually um so if you if you put at the end of the first episode she got kind of clipped it wasn't like a bad wound but because they're undergoing g-forces you have to realize that your blood's being forced being pressurized to a, to a point so it won't really like congeal well or you have to have a lot more pressure on it to counter the bleeding um so it, there's a little lot going on there there's a pretty bad situation for them all and it looks like there's burning cutting burning cutting burning cutting and then so will the other people will burn and cut burn and cut um and you're kind of having a chase kind of a chase uh around uh for a while and it sounds like they've been going for almost like a few days if not a week or so being chased so really interesting to think about um but um, yeah, we'll get right back to it here. Get back to the action here. Oh, and then they're talking about slingshotting. So slingshotting is where, so the thing is that when you accelerate a direction, you're going that direction now. And they have little little control thrusters that can modify the, the orientation of the ship. So you're going forward, but then you put a little thrust off here, you'll suddenly pivot a little bit. What they're talking about slingshotting is you, you, you head the ship at a direction to try to catch the gravity of an object that usually has to be a pretty damn big object, so like a really large asteroid. Um, and that will like cause the ship to kind of bend around it. And you can use that to kind of turn the ship without cutting thrusters and everything. They talk about the drive plume. The drive plumes are when like the ship's actually hitting thrust and it's a, it, they're bright. The drive plumes can be seen from space and they actually look like, um, you can, people can see them from like, you know, planets away. They're, they look like stars. They look like dull stars in the, in the sky. They're kind of moving. So they're pretty easy to spot in that regard. And um, But cutting the, cutting the drive, usually it gets a lot harder to see a ship, especially when you're dealing with ships that are like literally hundreds of thousands of miles from each other. Uh, kilometers, whatever you call them. They're huge, huge distances. And so the idea is that they're going to cut that. They can run the thrusters. The thrusters don't pick up because they're just like... The thrusters are just pushing out... Um, basically like superheated water. They're, they're, they're not anything fancy. They're not some fancy sci-fi thing. It's just, they heat a bunch of water, open up the thing, and it's just like, it's like a super soaker just pushes the thing in the direction. You ever use like a water rocket? It's the same thing. Uh, when you're a kid, you go out, the, you, the, you have the pump rockets. Yeah, same thing, so. All right, I'll get back to here. I'll shut up for a little bit. Could work, if there is actually something there. I love you, Con. Stations. I love you, Khan, so much. Khan, on my board. I'm waiting for someone to cosplay Khan, dude. I'm waiting for someone to cosplay Khan. Oh, thank, thank you, Akpong. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can rant about this, like all this crap, because like it's it's a lot of fun. 
what, what is funny though about about Khan here though is that Khan like it's it's pretty clear that Khan's gonna lose the arm because of the of being shot and then having a high G burn that accelerates the injury. That literally happened on Avrax Precipice. So it kind of laugh, it happened back in um that earlier this year, I think. Yeah, earlier this year, yeah. Rounds to start Gatling gunning. So what they're doing with the PDCs here? Normally the PDCs, the the Gatling guns are on the side. They're def they're point defense cans. They're not really for attacking unless you get super super close. But what they do is what what they're doing here is they're firing a bunch of the rounds. Uh, they, first off, they're firing them at an angle to try to catch those torpedoes when they when they do come. But before that, what they were doing is they're firing them in the line of the flight path of the other ship. And what that's going to do is force that ship to move. So it isn't even that the bullet has to fire fast. You can just put the bullets in space around that around that, that area, and the thing will hit it fast enough that it'll it'll tear up the ship. Um, and the bullets, if you're curious, are um i they're basically like 30 cal rounds something like that like maybe 30 50 cal rounds or big rounds and i believe they are traditionally tungs or sorry they're used traditionally teflon coated tungsten so they're uh they're not just heavy they're dense they're also uh lubricated to go through stuff it's pretty dirty <laughs> they're not like bullets like this big i mean massive rounds these are good shots they did, they did a nice job and they did, they, they picked the blue, which is the, the battle lighting. They use. Six G! This is like obscenely fast. Burning? Now! Few ships here, ship graveyard. It's shit pirates! You did it, boss man! <laughs> Fucking legend! <laughs> Quiet! The twins are great. Yeah, Khan's got like her little stub of a cigar left. She just sits there and sucks on. I gotta figure something out. And that was what Europa's Bane, the name of the ship. That was what we learned in the first game. That's the one they're evading. It's a big ship too. It's like a frigate. It's not a small like cruiser. It's probably like three to four times the size of the Rasanate. It's a big ship, which is a light, which is a um. We don't have much time. The pirates are searching for us, yeah. and we can't run again without more fuel and reaction mass. Arlen? Rotna and I will head out and start scanning. Someone's up with Arlen. He's got a little, he's got a little uh, twitch there. Captain, I'm prepped for surgery as soon as Khan is ready. <sighs> Virgil's the man. I like Virgil. Virgil's Tell my second favorite character. Oxygen. I wouldn't be needing surgery if he didn't freak out the first time. I'm still here. Oh, that's great. Let's see. Here's all we have. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Virgil won't let you down. He handled Ray in surgery just fine. Hey, remember, I, I chose to have Ray lose ready. the leg. Is the uh, patient? Fine. But you're staying to make sure Dr. Dipshit doesn't cut off the wrong arm. They have these kind of generic prosthetics they're using here. Um, they're not using like like hyper advanced prosthetics like you would see if someone had time to get custom fit. These are kind of like more makeshift ones. Um, and uh, yeah. 
We got debris field, a little graveyard action here. Looks like we got three ships. MCRN. Uh, we have a UNN ship, and it looks like I think there was a Belcher ship. Cap. Scanners aren't picking up any signs of fuel. Keep looking. Meantime, I'll go for the reaction mass. So, um, reaction mass is just like, uh, well, basically what they need for thrusters to kind of kick it over. And then, um, fuel pellets are like the pellets they use in the fusion reactor, uh, to cause the fusion reaction to happen. I think they're usually uranium, um, and everything. So yeah, it's, it's kind of that, um, but let's take a look around here real quick and see what we're doing here. So we have our objectives. Search for a reaction mass, okay, with the logs, but I don't think we have any logs. All what right, so a we... mess. What got Earth and Mars so worked up? And what's a Belta ship doing in the middle yeah. of it? Who knows? Hopefully they all got some reaction mass on board, though. We have the UNN, I think it's the Hiram Grant, which is uh, Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant's name. We have the Crowley, which I'm not sure that's named after. I. Maybe uh, Alistair Crowley, but I'm not sure. And then this one is called the Le Guin, which is probably named after Ursula Le Guin, who's a sci-fi, uh, who's a sci-fi writer. Um, but it's interesting it says MCR, not MCRN. Uh, I was a little surprised at that because that one says UNN. So it's like I feel like this should have said uh, MCRN, but um, especially because they, that's not necessarily the MCR uh, logo. That's not the the logo of the nation. That's lo that's more of the logo of the um, the military. So I'm kind of curious about that. Uh, I You will see me go off about uh, some, quote, I don't think there's inaccuracies, but uh, stuff like that. So I usually go and look around the ships first uh, because there's like usually hidden stuff around here. Um, so and you can see that they, they use those little markers. So basically the, um, the idea is that like they send out these nav beacon markers, like a major things are kind of interested in. Um, and uh, you can kind of like, Knows you know where to go, kind of, or it gives you a better idea where you should be going. Damn, the blast doors to the Laguna are locked down. Not sure if there's a way to open them. Always a way through, if you got enough explosives. Go check out the other ships. I'll see what I can rig up. You want to use explosives to blast through a blast door? Guess that could work. Yeah, it could. She's got a little EVA pack on here. Let's see what we can find here. So usually you can find kind of weird extra stuff in this game, in these games on uh, these kind of like extra little pads here where there's like just kind of ripped off bulkheads. Uh, oh, see there's something right there. For assessment. All right, so I got a mission log. Let's see what we got here. Uh, uh assessment. Let's see here, uh, the Laguin, uh, they look at the ship, they're saying uh, the Belter ship, either Callisto or Vesta shipyards. Callisto is interesting because Callisto is where the Martians have their biggest um, shipyard. That's the, place, that's the only place they can produce like the Donager class, which is like their huge, devastatingly big battleships. Like it, it dwarves these, like these were maybe like, this ship you're looking at here is maybe like one sixth the size of it, maybe one eighth. Um, and the year is made to, uh, 23.2. So the ship's about like maybe 25 years old, uh, two PCs, put it best cans, torpedoes. I guess that means tor three torpedo tubes, not necessarily three torpedoes on board. So it kind of shows that the basic ship, um, yeah, compared to a Martian vessel, it's not much. Um, but Mars seem was focused on the Laguin. That's interesting. Let's see what else we can find out here. Get out of here. That little beacon looks like something on there too. Yeah, the, the zero G in this plays a lot like uh, I was comparing it to Dead Space from the, the new Dead Space when I first played. Oh, okay, cool. We got these here blue crowdies. Bag boots. That's what they used to walk around a little crowdy. These boots might fit con. Once I get the feet out of them. Oh, yeah, feet are a good sign. Means they work. True. 
So what he's saying is like the mag boost didn't let go. It was the uh, the person the body let go first. Uh, yeah, that's that means they did keep on. Let's take a look. These are the um, the supply vaults they use. So like um, the uh, this is kind of how like they kind of the Artemis the Artemis the ship you're on basically has a bunch of these. And what they're doing is they're having those, uh, they kind of attach them to the ships and then stockpile that and then fly that back to the ship. Uh, it's kind of a clever way to get stuff. Uh, there's one more thing out here I know I want to find. Let's see here. I think it's on. That's telling me I'm going too far. Right, let's get here. I want to say it's, I want to say it's on the UN ship. So let's go and take a look at the UN ship first. Over here. So we got a few points of entry. We got that point of entry. And we're gonna take a look at the top of it real quick here. And they did a nice job letting you um like look around the ships. Um it's kind of cool. Like they kind of showed the scale of the ships pretty well. Um they tend to be pretty pretty good size. Um let's see here. I'm trying to remember because one more item I need to find out here, or I want to find at least. Let's see. I could have sworn it was on this one, but maybe I was wrong. I'll go look for it later. And you can see the PDCs there from the ship. Um, they're kind of inactive. They, one thing they didn't do in this game that I'm kind of, I'm not saying annoyed by, but it, it feels like they could have done was, um, like uh, there's PDCs come in different like configurations, like they look different. And they kind of have all their PDCs in the game look the same. They kind of have the same model for them all. And like, they're, there's different, uh, they come in different shapes and different sizes, if you will. But let's go ahead and get into this, uh, the Crowley real quick here. Hey. Look, Commando. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Always appreciate the uh, subs. Can't go wrong. Means a lot. All right, let's get in here. All right, we're walking through the ship here. Med bay. That's a good place to start. Okay, let's see here. Let's get a look. Focus drugs. So focus drugs. Um, I don't know. Is this the UN ship? Which ship is this? Oh, this is, this is the Martian ship. That's fine. I'll start with the Martian ship. I was going to say, the focus drugs is more of a Martian thing. All right. All right. Martian ship first. Crowley. So let's take a look here. Were they planning for an interrogation? Then why'd they start shooting? So the focus drugs are like this super... Um, uh, what they do is they, uh, thanks for hanging up, coming by Acapunk, I appreciate everybody that comes by. Uh, the, the focus drugs are these things that alter someone's awareness. They're kind of like super, uh, it's like super Ritalin almost. Um, they augment how much like light the eyes bring in, how much you hear. And what they, what they do is they use them when they interrogate people. So the person doing the interrogation actually takes the drug. And what happens is they can see twitches in the person, they can focus on them, they can see like a more of it, they're more sensitive to the person, hearing their breathing, and they can try to get more information out of them. It's kind of neat. All right, let's go call Arlen and Raylan about it. The Martian ship had focus drugs on board. Must have wanted to question someone. I hate those things. Rayon and I got busted by the MCR in once. Didn't think I'd leave that interrogation room alive. Watching that Martian's eyes go all weird. Last time we ever stole anything on Vesta, had to move to Ceres and start stealing there. Yeah, because usually that means you're dealing with like um, their infosec, their information security, or you're dealing with um, the Martian Secret Service, which is like the name of their, their organization. They're basically their version of the CIA. So you can see the med bay, they got all their surgery tech and everything. And then you can see that here's like the main quarter of the ship, so I can go up or down. It looks like, ooh, there's an op there. Let's go grab that. Self-propelled rounds. Nice. Hopefully won't need these anytime soon. After this week, maybe keep them close by. 
The self-propelled rounds are basically, um, when you fire a gun, it kicks back, and if you're in low gravity, um, you'll get thrown way back, because you don't, you don't have something to brace on, basically. Um, the self-propelled rounds are kind of like bullets or mini rockets, like they push themselves out. Um, and it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a handy way to, 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 to fire, but they're not terribly uh, cheap to have versus like, um, uh, say, uh, you know, standard old, old issue rounds. So this looks like the bridge. You can see all the command chairs here. There's a command station here. Let's see what we got here, hand terminal. Uh, Admiral Housley. Uh, let's see here, this guy's saying, uh, you received a new briefing when reiterate that the victory conditions remain the same as before. You have to, uh, you have to intercept the Liguin and stolen tech to return to us. Okay, cool. Um, he's like, you're bringing an entire fleet. It was just one cruiser. He's like, that's before the, the UN got, the UN got involved. So basically the Earthers got involved. They're like, okay, we gotta, we gotta step it up. Uh, what are my orders if El Hashem does engage with Liguin or cuts off our intercept, which is, um, the UN ship, it sounds like. Uh, your primary objective is to detain the fugitives of the stolen tech, but candidly, if El Hashem initiates, you will have the opportunity to respond measurably. I wouldn't waste an opportunity like that if I were you. Ooh, doggy. But basically, he's like, you know... If, so the MCRM was chasing the Veltas because they stole something. Only need one ship to chase someone. Why'd they bring our whole fleet? Yeah, it sounds like uh, they brought it to the UN. The Martians so. didn't want the UN to intercept the stolen tech first. They sent a fleet to keep them away. And the UNN reacted the way they always do, with guns. Yeah, so they kind of escalated the battle there, it sounds like. Once the Innos caught up to the Beltas, it was over in minutes. Yeah, the belt, that Belta ship ain't going to stand up against uh, this, these guys' ships. All right, so we're going to go back down to the shaft here. And this is actually kind of a traditional way that most ships in the Expanse are built, is that there's a single shaft that goes through the whole ship. They're built on layers upon layers upon layers like that because when you're going, when the ship's going that direction, which is how it goes, they push that gravity that way, so it's a little more easy for people to move around. Then you get layer to layer through, usually a um, a lift or and or a ladder. Let's go ahead and keep off here. What do we got? Okay, so there was the med bay we came in, and then we come down here. That's all. All right, cool. So we're in the uh, food the place where we get food. Let's see what we got over here. Covered. Ah. So we got covered. Oh, mushroom powder. Okay. If you remember from uh, the first episode, uh, Reggie will probably appreciate uh, these what's mushrooms. it called? Uh, oh, maybe he'll make white kibble when we uh, get back. Virgil really, really likes mushrooms. Cap, what do you think of Virgil? You trust him? Uh, I do trust Virgil. Bird, I actually like Virgil. Virgil's a smart man and a reliable medic. Until he got our pilot shot, you mean? Uh, let's see real quick here. At the. Don't, don't come to my channel advertising. Don't come to my channel with advertising your uh, your wares like that. It's not cool, dude. Appreciate the hustle, but yeah. Um, okay, cool. We got another ooh, a photograph. Some people don't have anything real to care about. This is really interesting, like her kind of commentary on these all these kids playing soccer is that like they don't have anything real to care about. Like that's not something anyone should care about. That's really interesting actually. Um, kind of a dolphin perspective that like the inners just kind of are just not lazy, but they just, they fuck around. They they don't do anything real. They don't have any real like Worries. All right, coffee machine. Huh. Typical Inyas travel all the way out here, yet can't break free from their peppy plant extract. Man, you gotta like. So, but what cracks me up about that is like she's clowning on coffee, and yet like they use the word like uh uh caca aqua. Like they have their own word for coffee. Um, I don't know. I, I, that one's kind of that one's kind of a weird take. But yeah, I get like. Or kind of critique of like, oh, they have to have this from home. They can't go out without having their safety blankets and stuff like that. Oh, wait, this is the, what do we got over here? I see, all right, system, oh, handy. Might be able to rewire this guidance system to work with our ammo. It was good enough for Earth and Mars to tear each other apart. 
and neither side surrendered, even after taking heavy fire. Well, that would be like a system that'll like in, yes. uh, they never track know things, make sure um, that like the weapons can uh, track the targets and stuff like that too. The torpedoes are pretty easy to track because they're um, they also have their own drive plumes. Uh, but their issue is that like the torpedoes are much faster because there's no one living on them. They don't have to worry about killing the crew if they go too fast. What do we got here? MCRN tool. But this ship's really well laid out. They actually did a good job on this ship. I actually like this one a lot. They got some tools. Okay. Maya is always complaining about the tools in the engineering bay. Maybe an MCRN model would cheer her up. Yeah, Cap. Cheer up the Martian girl with your tools. Pashang Fong. She's a like fucking fool, basically. Um, but yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Get Maya some better tools, like the stuff she's used to working with back in the, um, the MCRN. So we got your handsaw. I'm sure Khan will be fine. I like how the handsaw yeah, reminds her of her pilots about to get uh, their arm taken off. Don't want to interrupt, but how is everything down there? The auto dock was amazing. I want to high five it, but it's still covered in some really unspeakable substances. Khan will be out for a while. When she wakes up, we'll try to attach the prosthetic and. Oh. What the? Oh yeah, Maya. Shit. So the auto docks are like um, they're they're largely used for like uh, you know, like uh, diagnostic stuff. Uh, so like you're 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 kind of like how do I put it? Uh. Figuring out what's wrong with someone, like blood test, kind of automated automated blood tests, um, stuff like that. They they do this, and it's it's there to like make sure that like you know what you're getting into with someone. You're not just like giving them, um, you know, doing whatever uh, you need to or something like that uh, with them. But it's kind of an interesting element of it. But it doesn't do everything automatically. Like you can you can have it do a certain amount, but it can't like do everything. You might have to have elements that like, guide the person, but they're, they can do some stuff like administer drugs, um, usually do kind of internal treatments. Um, on the show, you'll see the part where like they need, they need some, uh, Holden needs some treatments, him and Miller need treatments. And the autodocs actually just like, it's, it's opinion is that they're past being saved. It's, it's saying, hey, uh, we're gonna make sure they don't, they don't die in pain <laughs> versus trying to cure them. Cause like, yeah, but they end up like actually fixing it. The reaction mass. Found some reaction mass. Toss it to me. I will store it. Nice toss, Cap. Woo. Boss man, you probably noticed me Baratna has been a little edgy lately. Ray, your brother has been an angry Pasheng Wallow since my first day on board. This is different. He's... He's got the shakes. It's the pixie dust. But he's been clean for almost a year. He takes some meds that help him second. straight. But... But we haven't done a supply run in weeks. Yeah. Ran out of toxiperidone three days ago. I'm guessing that's Don't like a us, methadone He'll type thing. He's tough. Um, but... Thought you should know. So, so pixie dust uh, comes up in the Expanse books and the, the show a little bit. It's a um, it's a euphoric stimulant, so it makes you more alert, or not more alert. For that. It makes you like feel euphoric and feel good about stuff, but also makes you more active. So it has kind of an amphetamine uh, thing to it. The problem with it though is that because you become kind of fixated on the euphoria, and you become kind of um, you're like you're into that versus. Uh, you don't really become concerned for others, we'll say. Like, now that you're a sociopath, but you just, you kind of don't care about, like, if something happens around you. You're not really paying attention. You're focused on what you're doing, but not paying attention around you. Um, in, uh, in the book, uh, it comes to a point where, like, they kind of figure out that someone's, like, dealing pixie dust on this one ship and are making it and then dealing it, and it's causing, like, a rapid amount of injuries on the job. Because, not because, like, the people that are doing it are getting injured, they're just injuring other people and not really reporting it or not coming up to date on it. So it is kind of a risk, a risky thing. Container vault. I'll never look at a containment vault the same again after that terrible situation with Rayan. Ray, where she cut off his leg. All right. Rayan, how's the new prosthetic doing? 
Sometimes it feels just like my old leg. But then sometimes it feels like it's the stranger who won't let go of me. And then it starts itching so bad. Quit whining. You made the red call, Cap. Ray wasn't using his leg much anyway. <laughs> this is the... This is that med. Yeah, I already came in here. Okay. So yeah, we finished with Crowley. Let's go to the Hiram Grant. I believe it is here. We're going to orient ourselves and take a look around. So there's an entrance there. I think there's... Might be on the other side of the ship. There was that over this way here. Yeah, I like the little guidance cursor they have on here to kind of show you how much you're accelerating in a certain direction. Super handy. I wanted to take a look at the back end of this ship. Hey. So basically he's asking you to try to get some medicine to help take the edge off of his brother, who's basically going to withdrawal, so what it comes down to. Um, I don't remember where it was. I found it last. I, I played through the game last night. Um, but it makes sense though, because you kind of want to make sure your your crew's not like messed up, and, and those those medications will help a lot. Um, if I can, I remember finding it in kind of a weird location. I could have sworn it was on the back end of a ship. No, oh, not here then. Let me go underneath this guy. I remember seeing it on like a plate or something. Um, let me go beneath the ship here. My shadow. Oh, these things are big. I kind of wish you could move faster than this. Uh, technically, you could accelerate pretty much as fast as you want, just you can keep on putting out reaction mass. What she's doing with that little, little steam that's coming out. The little. Tss, 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 tss. I don't remember where it was. Oh, there we go. What's all that? See, we got a bunch of stuff over here. They did a good job with the music in this too. It, it has a good sound alike. Um, they they couldn't get all the Clint Shorter music from the show, um, and Clint Shorter don't come cheap. Uh, but they did manage to like get someone that could like kind of oh, mimic his style. That's too far out. I don't know where the hell it was. I totally stumbled upon it last night too. That's just kind of bothered me. It wasn't. I don't know if it was on the Crowley. I remember it was out in the light somewhere though, so it should be on the light side of these things. But I could have swore it was on the the UN ship. But maybe I was wrong. Let me go to the Crowley here and see if I can find it. I think it's on the far side. I'm gonna take a look around the the Liguin. Actually, it might be on the Liguin. Hell, I should have I should have like told myself where it was, <laughs> wrote myself a note or something. But the the, the honestly the um, I like the kind of move around space is kind of fun. It's it's, it's really relaxing to. I don't remember where I stumbled upon it. Yeah. Alright, we'll go to the rant and take a look around there. It's on the outside of the ship, though. I remember that. I was 
I could be just going around circles too, like a fool here. I think I'll look on the other side of the crowd real quick. I remember it being kind of bluish, so that's why I want to keep on saying like it's. Um, I can't want to think it's the uh, the grant, but yeah, you can see they they use the same PC um, model for everything, which kind of like. Uh, there, there's like a there's like a military model, but then there's kind of like a generic version of, of them too. And I'm a little surprised they didn't use more of that. I'm gonna take a look over here on the part where the uh, the Crowley kind of cracked in half. I know I'm way out here. Not down here, is it? I remember it's kind of like a bright side. I don't remember. This reminds me of it a little bit. But here. Apply <clears throat> by this. Yeah, I remember it being on like on a plate or something, like kind of like a, like a protruding part of the. Uh, I guess it was on like a protruding part of the UN ship, but I'll have to go look it up. For the grant. Go look over here real quick. Now I'll, I'll go inside. I'll go take a look online real quick and see if I can find this. He is around here. It's all. I remember it being kind of bright in the area. And it's just kind of sitting there, like on like a like part of the hull. Yeah. All right, I'm just going inside. Why well, I'm just kind of screwing around here too much? Check with this over here. Where are they on this? They're trying to like watch their this other guy here, like show me where it is. And he is on. Yeah, it seems like he's like crazy on the ships here. Oh, okay, he's on. Okay, I see where he is. I know where this is. It's kind of like they kind of did a thing where they kind of doubled it up. Yeah, it's down here. They kind of doubled it up on a location. So like there was this piece here, but then behind this, I think it's behind this crate right here. There it is. Oh, look at that. They hit that hard. Did they hide some stuff? That's pretty good. All right. Boom. Gotta be something in here that can help Arlen. Objective. So let's see here. We got good. Or All right, cool. Perfect. All right, now we can go do the... Uh, the other ship here which i think there was an entrance yeah there's an entrance right there so one of the complaints that like a few people on the um expanse in the expanse community had was that the un ship is laid out horizontally it's not laid out uh vertically 
which is how like the Martian ship is, and they don't really do that. Um, Got a barrel here. I'll take a. So I'm kind of curious what happened there. I don't know if it's just like a design what, thing Sasata. or what, but it's kind of a... a... Boss Mang, I got everything hooked up to blow the door. Head back to the Laguin and check it it's, out. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a it. quirk that I... Hopefully we'll find enough reaction like, mass uh, to get out of here. This is a established it's kind of like... We going treasure hunting? Yeah. You think those coordinates go anywhere interesting? We've been on the run for a week because somebody thinks so. Think so with a lot of torpedoes and guns, even. The the ship goes that way, um, and so it it doesn't really like follow that. It's it's not in the, the vertical configuration, which is really interesting. All right, so we got here uh, under Secretary Aaron Rice. Aaron Rice is second in command of the UN. Um, he's kind of like the vice president of like Earth. Um, all right, Security Council. We're directing all El Hashim forces within range to converge on the intercept location. You're going to command the fleet. He's all, I thought we were just shaking down some skinnies. Uh, no, Anasek. So Anasek, this this is a weird thing, possibly the Anasek stepping in. Apparently these belters made off with some Martian tech. So Anasek is a... Uh, they're a Martian-owned private security company. They're kind of like Star Helix. They're not. They're not the mar They're not the navy. They're not the military, but they're kind of a private security force. Um, and the I think they run Palace Station. Um. And so, uh. Yeah, Aaron Wright's kind of a dick here, and Garth is like, yeah, I'll do it all. Um, but I'm kind of whatever curious. the belt has stole, the UNN and MCRN both went after it. Yeah, and a sex but a weird reference. But how did reference. this turn into a shootout? Uh, the MCRN overreacted to the theft, and the UNN overreacted to the Martian fleet. They got into a pissing contest, and neither backed down. And the belt got caught in the middle again. So it sounds like what happened was, these guys stole this stuff, Anasek went after them, which Anasek, that's what Anasek would do, and then Mars was kind of pissed and wanted to make a make a show of it, so they brought in the military. The military comes in, and the UN comes in, and then the UN's like, "Well, we got to bring more people because it's Martian military." And then the Martian military brings in more, and they got into a little bit of an issue. The captain, very proud of his connections to the UN and brass. Yeah, El I don't know what El, Hash El Hashem is though. UN El Hashem, is it like a? Um, let me, let me go look that up, because I want to see what that is real quick here. Uh, um, I'm trying to figure out what it is exactly Al Hashim is because like I'm not sure if it's a private security organization or if it's like a fleet or if it's like someone they're working with. Um can't really tell. There, no. Oh, there we go. There we go. This debris. Yeah, these weird ships are kind of in the in that horizontal configuration versus vertical. But I want this game. Maya seemed willing to help with Khan's surgery. Hope she doesn't regret that now. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about the expanse, expanse at all, let me know. I'll be happy to status report. Uh, tackle anything. Fire the torpedoes! <laughs> Get those sons of bitches a welcome, or I'll throw you in the brig. Sit down, or I'll cut off the other arm. <laughs> Sorry, Cap. What was that? Is that Khan? Why is she so angry? Something about bogeys on the radar? She's a little woozy from anesthesia. Yeah. I hope she passes out again. I'm gonna draw on her face. My eyes obsessed drawing on people's faces. Earthers love their oceans. Too bad they destroyed them all. Real Earth whiskey. Even Cox has to settle for the belt of stuff. Call Cox since Cox. he's still alive. 
I need you to tell me everything you know about this Toussaint and the Europa's the being. The Europa's being. They're pirates. What's to tell? Helpful as always. I'll leave you to enjoy the brig. Wait, wait. Is Khan... Uh, I mean... How is she? She'll live. No thanks to you. Or that hothead Virgil. He's the one who lunged in and made the gun go off. Which was in response to you provoking him. You seem to say that he was hiding something from us. Maybe. Let me out of here and we can talk about it. Mmm, no. Alright, so this reference is really fascinating. Ugh. The call of Cla and, and Kalash. And you say that Belta food is disgusting. Um, so Kalash Kla is, it's a reference to a Simpsons episode, uh, Homer vs. the City of New York. And... He goes and you know he's he's just he needs some food and he goes up to the guy and says you know you guys what do you got he, he's like a cop kosh and he goes cop kosh and then he has like the crab juice or Mountain Dew he's ah oh, I'll take the, the crab juice but uh, in the expanse on in season uh, five when um, uh, Amos goes back to Earth and he's in Baltimore there's a there's a, cr a crab juice cop kosh seller who's saying all this stuff from the original Simpsons episode like barking. Um, and they talk about Cop Kalash being like the uh, the pride of Baltimore. So it's pretty funny. So this is kind of a reference. And there was a, a, a Expanse uh, Cop Kalash, uh, or sorry, it was a crab juice shirt uh, from the Shirt of the Month Club they did a few, uh, few years ago. So it's a good, it's a good reference. Um, but someone had a lot of fun make, making that design and just putting crab juice and, and a good Simpsons reference into the Expanse. Um, and it's one of those ones that people kind of still kind of gravitate back towards, no pun intended. I like her animation, she knocks stuff out of the way. Doesn't care how big it is, she's like, ah, get out of my way. Ah, get on my face, you box. Who we got here? Acceleration drugs, that's like juice. Got some juice here. We're running low after the past week. The thing about that too is like, you'll have- longer in the crash couch and I'll stop pissing that stuff. Uh, the thing too is like, the military grade's a lot better. The, the cheap stuff's kind of like, it, it's supposed to burn. Um, like that's how the sensations describe when they have cheaper stuff. And the military grade, you're the, there's not as much of an edge on it. You come down a lot easier. I hope Khan's surgery goes well. For her sake and Virgil's. That's what gets my call. Is everything, um... Okay, she just said we've been boarded. And now she's wandering around looking for intruders. So, everything's fine. Hey, you have your control. Maya, this is Khan we're talking about. No one knows what she's capable of. You need to hide. First of all, fuck you. <laughs> Second of all, she's gonna hurt herself if she... Wait. Hey there. Do you want to lie down for a minute? Do you want to fucking die? <laughs> oh, no. Good old Khan. Yeah, so this is a pretty good size ship. This one's a little bit... It's, it looks like a, like a freighter. I say a light freighter. It's a little bit bigger than the Rosanante. Um, the Rosanante, that's right. The Rosanante is a Corvette. Um, so it's a speed ship with attack abilities. This is like a, a frigate. Uh, this would be like a, probably a frigate too. Um, yeah. Load open. Explosives are set. Good work, Kamina. Now let the whole station see what happens to traitors who sell out the OPA to the Inyas. I'm in. So this, this ship too is built in the uh, the vertical configuration of the horizontal, which is nice. Do we have anything over here? Of course, we're busted. Cargo bay. Hmm. Another blast door. Pshing. Fine. I'll get more explosives. 
But if you don't have blast doors or basic containers, no need. I should be able to access the explosives. lockdown controls from the bridge. The idea is like you don't you don't have Good the explosion rip through the whole ship. Still find more explosives, uh, just in case. And bay here. Got auto dock. If Maya and Khan start fighting, there won't be any ship left to go back to. The what's interesting too is all the auto docks have protogen on it, and protogen is a big player in the expanse universe. Um, they're kind of ubiquitous and around, and kind of like they do a lot of fringe tech. Um, and they're a part of the, the great conspiracy, we'll say at the beginning of the story, if you watch the show or read the books. Please tell me you're still alive. Okay. Khan and I had to trade a few punches, but we got her calm enough to attach the prosthetic. Aw, were you worried about me? A rampaging pilot on a drug-fueled hallucination? I never doubted you for a second. Goddamn right. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to find an ice pack. That went surprisingly well. Yalek Pashang! If there's one thing all belters can agree on, is that the moldy belters kick ass. Very closer. Let's see here. Uh, Baratna, your Titania OPA family await you with open arms, fully loaded, and fully loaded railguns for any. Bakwalas following in your wake here, so they say they real guns, which is kind of interesting for developers to have. That's like pretty high tech stuff. Um, solenoids you took from the MCRN, just of course, are going to advance our Terra work here. Um, first, Blue Thomas built a land base, and that is all thanks to you. Um, so keep burning hard. Playing. So they're basically saying, like, thanks for like, you're gonna, this stuff's gonna help us out on our attempt to have an independent colony. Um, and it's not like they want to have it on like a bigger, or like a Titania being a moon. That'll be pretty, that would be pretty nice to see what we got here. Get a bridge. Yeah, console, let's see you look at. They were heading toward Titania to link up with the Belta sect there. Almost made it. Solenoids. Wouldn't let anyone get their hands on that tech. Good for them. Solenoids are like, they're not like, um, it's something we have right now, but they're, um, you see them in like, uh, cars, but it's a, um, it's a very specific, uh, type of like electromagnet magnet where you kind of manipulate the shape to create like a certain like basically much more powerful magnet in a much smaller space or a certain energy magnet in a certain confined space kind of machine. Looks like the crew tried to record a message. This message is to all Erda and Martian security forces in the area. We have received your warnings and demands and this will be our only response. The MCRN says we have stolen their property. The UNN says we are traveling illegally in their sector. We recognize neither of your claims over us. This is our belt. Torpedoes, away! Incoming! Stand down now and let us keep our course. We will either join our OPA Baratnas on Titania or sacrifice ourselves to your destruction. There is no other option. Belta who here is prepared yeah, to die are, for your belt? These guys are pumped up. Belta Lorda! Belta Lorda! Belta Lorda! Belta You hear that? Wouldn't surrender the tech and send their message in the only way the inners understand. What was the message? Uh... Pretty much. That the inners are the real thieves here. They take from us every day, and they'll keep doing it if we keep letting them. Brave Koyos. Oh, lockdown girls. Alright, I see my pop my head cut off there. I, I, I haven't messed with my uh my camera on here too much, so. I think I'm a little close now. All right, so it should be open the bottom. Let's take a look. A big cargo bay. There it is. Very nice. 
the mess hall. Let's see what the mess hall real quick. Can't go wrong with the mess hall, man. You always need food, water. Okay, so this was actually one of the cooler. This is actually one of the cooler elements in, in on the game. It was um, logo is is a um, it's kind of like a bar side game. It's kind of like their pool, if you will. Uh, it's kind of like a combination of like bumper pool, um, like foosball, kind of beer pong almost. And uh, it's referenced in the books. It's referenced on the TV show, but we never really got to see what it looks like. So this is the first time I've actually seen what a board of it looks like. And it reminds me a lot of bumper pool. I had a bumper pool table as a kid. And so this kind of reminds me of that. I'm really curious to see how it plays. But I remember um, it's, a, it's a belter oriented game. And so like a big thing in it was that like they had Holden play it uh, when he was out with Naomi and like he's, he's like, I don't understand this game, but apparently I'm, I'm okay at it, you know? After I wiped the floor with doors one time, he declared that Gogo -Go was frivolous and banned OPA from play. <laughs> Typical. Yeah, I'll around with the global table. Reporters back here. I like this is actually one of the better looking mess halls. This one, this is actually one of the more reasonable ones. Um, as if you watched my video with uh, Amber, uh, we talked about how the um, the Artemis has an obscene amount of microwaves. All right, cargo bay shooting down. Or sorry, engine room. Gotta go engineering. If you control engineering, you control the ship. I forget that in a second. Data cube hacker. So these are like decrypted. This data cube tools. hacker might be useful. Data cubes are like little sure, encrypted shards. Sure, I let you break into Rayon's special data drives. Set up push two. I think that's like a fuel injection place. Um, all right, so reaction mass. I'll need to make a hole to pass this to the okay. twins. There it goes. That through. I like how that just happens to like not have like the double hull at that point. It's like super thin there. Found another barrel. Woo! This is loaded! Or oh, whatever the Inya say. <laughs> Touchdown! Woo! Man, Got some radiation work. from a nearby ship, the Manitoba. Scanner shows the engine yeah, is no mostly shit. intact. Maybe a few pellets too. Bossman, that's the far edge of the debris field. You'll be exposed. You two head back to the Artemis. Everyone stays on the ship, but be ready to pick me up on my order. All right, so she's gonna go get, get herself out in the open there. Manitoba, interesting name too. Canadian uh, area of Canada. Don't know a lot about it, so I can't tell you much more about it. An interesting name for a, especially for a Martian ship. Bane, big nasty pirate ship. Captain, we're picking up a communication from the Europa's Bane. Sabaka, they locked us? No, it's a broadcast. But they must know we're close. Patch it over. There is no sense in running anymore. You know who I am, and I am looking forward to meeting you. Contact me to discuss the terms of your surrender. Or... Just sit and wait until we find you. It's only a matter of time. Got another belcher on her ass here. Song. Shit, shit, shit. Cap, you got to get back here. Not without fuel pellets. Stupid drone is stuck. That same hit the button there. Boom. Oh, that's nasty. So they have like these drones 
uh, rigged to the, um... I doubt they will all be so easy to kill. Yeah, he's rigged. Virgil, if I respond, will they be able to trace the signal? No, it will only confirm you are in broadcast range. But they seem pretty sure of that already. Put me through. Captain Zapata, this is Kamina Drummer of the Artemis. I don't want to fight you, but keep sending your crew after me, and I'll be forced to keep killing them. So it seems like they have it like these these rig these drones. They did a good job because these kind of the drone model from the uh, that was on the Rosinante uh, to uh, to have these like scan if they catch someone they'll basically, like, the PDC over there will rip through the area immediately. This isn't a bad strategy. Um, interesting enough, too, if you watch uh, Al Kamal, uh, his specialty of piloting is actually drones. He's actually a drone expert. Uh, uh, if you uh, read the lore a little bit more, he knows a lot. He's actually a pretty good drone pilot. So you have to avoid these things while trying to avoid the, uh, the pirates. What was interesting about that scene was that that guy he could have heard her coming because like, what's weird is you heard him talking and she shouldn't have been able to hear what he was saying because they're in space. They can't, they, you can't really hear things. But what should have been happening is he could have, he should have been able to feel her mag boots clicking um, and everything too. They're, they're pretty loud when you're moving on the bulkheads, especially when the ship's not moving. There's no, uh, no one else on the ship. Ooh, so there we got some more drones here scanning. Ooh, very close. I make it across this room without getting uh, seen. Let's see if we can pull it off here, kids. Huzzah! So, like I said, it's very Metal Gear Solid this part. All right, this guy's gonna come on in through. He's gonna be all spooky. Don't mind me. Let's walk up these walls. The old, the old shucky ducky. You're a long way from Siri Station, Kamina Drummer. You've heard of me? I've heard of your work and your bounty. Ooh. But if I'm speaking to you, what happened to Garrison Cox? Oh, so he knows about Cox. He attempted to double his profits. As a result, I am now captain. Not surprising. There's no loyalty among scavengers. Son Zapata. Not that the OPA is any better. You must really Ooh, enjoy jump. the this company of miscreants. Ooh, baby. Take it. There it is. Very nice. Got another one here. I kind of fucking jive around a little bit there. Boom. Very nice. A little more tense, a little more tense. Got a nice little room here, a little, little uh, espionage action here. Half the espionage action. Get around it. Gotta move, move, move. I will say it's pretty nasty when you get when you get caught. Get in here. Guy's yeah, gonna scan around. Yeah, keep on looking, buddy. Keep on looking. You go find that. You go find your, your diamond in the rough there, bud. Oh, ho, ho. all right. Oh, snap. Guy up a bit. Keep on. Tell me. Oh, this guy—he's popping rounds off. All right, pop up. Take a bead. Fire. Boom. Done. Oh, there he is. Draw a bead. Pop him off. Boom. Headshot. Very nice, Kamina. Very nice shooting. Yeah, you got that in your A. Go take a look at these guys. Yeah, notice how his feet are still on the ground. He shouldn't move, yeah. This one looks like an inner. Guess Toussaint and I have one thing in common. Keeping a crew of belters and inners from killing each other. Yuri Motek, first gunner. Lucky he missed me. Yeah, it's a little quick firefight. Um, I like the they don't sit there and just throw a bunch of rounds at each other. She she, she fires twice, hits twice. That's it. 
You can always retreat, Toussaint. So he's down Protect three the rest of your crew. Your reputation is well earned, Captain Drummer. Daniel and Yuri were, that gun, they were two of my best. But their needless deaths do not change. Enough. I've had a very long week in a crash couch because of you. <laughs> Either fall back or keep sending your men to die. Those are your options. So yeah, the crash couches like are kind of meant to like, you stay in them for a long time. Um, usually when they're burning out to a location because it takes like weeks to get to a place. Um, like if you're going, if you're coming from Earth and you want to go to like Saturn, it's going to take you like a week and a half, two weeks, depending on your burn. Um, if, if, at, on average, I should say, take longer, take shorter. Um, and of that, if you're burning hard, like a 2G burn, uh, even a 1G burn, maybe, uh, you would be in your crash couch for probably like, probably close to like 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, and then they usually kind of cut the burn for like two to three hours a day to let people kind of like relax up and everything. And then they start burning again. They do that especially for the belters. Um, that's the Solona. Let's see what the Solona thing here says. Um, incomplete kind of breakdown. This is their own tech. Why would they reverse engineer it? And the belt is on board of the Gwynn thieves. Maybe they were engineer contracts who created the technology they knew would never profit from and the belt could never afford. Um, maybe. Interesting. So the Martians didn't know what it was exactly, which is interesting. Go around. Yo. Huh. All right, let's see what we got up here. Oh, okay, cool. Little armory. Oh, that's like a, those are all tech gear. There it is, uranium oxide pellets. Good for any kind of fusion reactor. I like how it's a barata, uh, barata's gas, these two. Just gonna fly right out to this thing. Yeah, generally the ships, like, there's no, like, scan for life forms. They would just view her, the ship would just view her as, like, a, uh... Please tell me this thing has ammo. Uh... I'm on my piece way. Of debris. No! Everyone, stay back! What's oh. happening? Why are the pirates pulling away? There are always more options, Captain. I'll have the coordinates. Even if I have to come through rubble to find them. Goodbye. You're bluffing. Hello? Toussaint! Come on. Gotta be some ammo left. PDC delivery. Sabaka! Are you crazy? You could get killed. So could you. Now step back and let me do my job. I don't know what the fuck you two are doing, <laughs> but I'm approaching your location on control thrusters for whenever we shove off. Glad you're back at your post. What are you waiting for? We only get one shot before they know our position. Torpedo away. There! That's torpedo number three. You see, there's a mark. I'm going to hold it. Boom, spread. That's two, they just fired two torpedoes.
But what's tricky about that is that that means that the uh, Europa's Bane has fired seven torpedoes. Um, and so that's a lot of torpedoes. Usually these ships carry only 12. Um, depends how many um, mag, uh, how many torpedo tubes they have, because the, the tubes are usually loaded. They can load them like classic, like you would see like on a submarine where they kind of put one at a time in the tube. But oftentimes they're actually in um, uh, magazines, so they actually can like fire them sequentially through. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see that they fired seven off that quickly, which means they're probably in magazines. Um, and I think they had, I saw like, I think I counted, they fired two at the most at a time, so that probably means two tubes. Um, what that means is they fire off seven torpedoes. A ship like that maybe would carry 12. Maybe if they have backup and everything, maybe 24. Um, so that's a lot of torpedoes they went through just to try to get this, which means that these guys are desperate. Con, bow! That's your best bet if you don't have a crash couch to lay down the floor. DC's chittering. Are they shooting? Are we locked? Con! Oh, my, uh... I feel bad for, uh, drummer there, because that would hurt, like, hell, that would hurt your hand a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, you're like that, the We're out of range now. Whatever the fuck you did, so They're not standing up, that means they're doing, like, at least, like, three to four Gs. They're doing a hard burn. It's gonna be brutal. Well, I believe celebrations are. I love over. Virgil. We need more Virgil this episode, guys. And we do get more Virgil. Thankfully, this episode we get more Virgil. So I, I really like the pace of this episode because it starts off with a lot of action and a lot of like trauma, kind of built off the previous episode, and then it goes into um, this uh, like hyper action, you know, exploration action, but then it goes into like a really good social kind of element here as you kind of like, a lot of stuff that happened in episode one pays off Coordinates here. Coordinates are set for the MK core. Time to see what all the fucking fuss is about. I'm going with the theory it's about quick. With the fuel you found, we Not should have no problem core. getting there and back to Ganymede at least. And how is the new prosthetic? It'll do. Get some rest, Captain. No telling what we'll find at those coordinates. Oh, I'm gonna get, yeah, Con needs some rest. I mean, underwent some surgery there and everything. We're gonna go through the ship here, which is really cool. I, I dig going through the ship again. Um, it's super handy, and uh, I'm always a big fan of uh, being able to uh, explore it. Um, yeah, so. Okay, let's take a look here. So let's go ahead. Oh, Con. I've never had anything resembling a civil conversation with Khan before, but I've also never had a cigar to ply her with. I found the cigar in, in episode one, so let's go ahead and talk to Khan. Hey, Khan. Resting. Go away. <laughs> That's cool, you can see the injectors for the uh, the juice there in the back. They basically just poke holes through the suit. Um, even if you have a vacuum suit, they, they poke holes through it, and then um, it uh, the suits usually have like a self patching area there. Um, let's do our destination. Any guesses on our destination? Nada. All I know is that it's far the fuck out there. So whoever hid that treasure, wanted it far the fuck away. Well, they're, they're talking about going to Ganymede. They want to go do this thing and go back to Ganymede. Ganymede's actually, at this point in the, in the Expanse history, is actually under Martian control. Um, it's, or at least occupied. And Ganymede is the place where people go to have kids because it has the natural magnetosphere. And it's also the only place you can really grow food. They have like vast mirrors to keep uh, these food domes lit to, to grow like soybeans and whatever they can grow up out there. It's kind of cool. Uh, let me ask her about the pirates. Can you believe how vicious these pirates are? Yes. I mean, how they were willing to blow us up just to prove a point. Yes. So you don't think there's anything special about them? Yes, I do. 
They seem to have more guns. Fair point. All right, cigar time. I found this cigar on the Urshinabi. Thought you might want it. But I could always give it to the twins. Don't you dare so. give it to those two morons. <laughs> I'd use it as a butt plug or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Khan. First taste. You earned it. Um. So I play. I said keep it, but I was thinking about saying sure. Um. I'll, I'll say I'll let Khan keep it. It's a gift. It'd be wasted on me anyway. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> So, what's interesting about this is that, like, this is kind of like a, a no-go, um, because smoking like this, because the issue is that they have air scrubbers that get crap out of the air, um, and also make sure to like, get the CO2 out of the air, and the air scrubbers in this area would start going berserk seeing that much stuff, and they would actually think it's a fire, which, which it basically is. So it's kind of interesting seeing, like, um, them later smoke. Now, I, I, I will say this, because the ship is so big, and it's meant to have a lot more people on it, because it's... It, Huge ship. The air scrubbers would actually be underworked at this point because there's um, not as much activity on the ship. My husband, Bao, used to hate when I smoked. Said it was 40 minutes of pleasure for three hours of cleaning out the air vents. Yeah, pretty much. He wasn't wrong. What happened to him? So that, I'm gonna tell you, that, that cracks me the hell up too, her, her putting the, the cigar out on her hand. Um, I, I was at a, actually, because I was at a wedding, my friend's wedding, and um, they rented another house for the wedding. It was a really nice house and everything. And her dad was there, and her dad had lost his arm at a young age and had just gotten, right, like a, maybe a month or two for the, for the wedding, got this brand new, like, hyper advanced prosthetic, got this, this carbon fiber arm and everything. And he was kind of showing it off for everybody. Um, and he's like, like her husband was cooking and he had like a, he had like a boiling pot of water or something that's really hot on the stove. And the dad was like, oh, I'll help you, I'll help you and everything. He's like, okay, he'll help. And he like, he's like, yeah, I need to move that off the burner. And her dad, like with this like, this, like artificial arm, grabbed the thing, clicked it in position and picked it up and pushed over. And we're all like, holy shit, <laughs> like, you know, um, so that, that kills me because it reminds me of them, of this guy is like, using a starting arm to pick up stuff. He's gonna care how hot it is because it's not gonna burn through this carbon fiber arm. <laughs> the Pinafore, a small transport skiff owned by Trackman. I was pilot, I was chief mechanic. Boring work, little outside contact exactly what we wanted there'd been reports of pirates along our heading the usual shit we weren't worried because what's the point point? and besides we had our protocol protocol a maneuver we practiced in case of hostile boarding i'd feign submission hands behind my head and when bow thought the moment was just right He'd say the code word and hit the deck, and then... Modified SMG with heat targeting rounds. I could draw and fire the clip in five seconds, easily take out an entire raiding party. So her reference to Trackman is really interesting. That's actually a pretty deep reference. Um, it comes up in, I think, it comes up in, I believe, book five? When uh, the when the when the gates open up and like the big the big event and the expanse occurs, 
and people go through. Trackman's one of the people that's like transporting people to new worlds. Um, and Anna Volodov is one of the people that goes to a new world. Um, and so it's really interesting. Uh, that name's like, that's like a deep, deep reference. That's a very like obscure corporation, but they're, they're basically long haulers. That's what they do is they do really long um, uh, transport. That sounds like what she wanted to sign up for, so. Uh, impressive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That is actually a solid tactical maneuver. Pyrus wouldn't expect a weapon there and Bao would be safe on the floor. I oh, know. So what happened? The pirates came for us like we feared. They boarded the pinafore. I drew them in, got them occupied, and at the right moment, Bao said the word. Ooh. And I froze. I'd never fired live rounds in battle before, and I suddenly doubted myself. What if the clip was jammed? Would it even fire? Maybe these pirates weren't so bad. It was just a moment, but it was enough time for an antsy pirate fuck to grab me and shoot my bow. A really, really well done model. Yeah, okay, so she's got some trauma here. Um, wasn't your fault. I was gonna start with your husband. I'm so sorry, Khan. It sounds like you two really cared about each other. That's the thing. We did. It's so easy to stop caring out here. Don't you want to know the code word? <laughs> Artemis. I'd never heard of her. It was Bao who read all the Greek bullshit. Apparently, she and I shared a few things in common. Um, great beauty or anger? Um, go with anger. Your godlike wrath? <laughs> that may have been part of it. <laughs> Mostly, he said it was because I never missed my shot. Tell you what, if I ever get the chance, you bet your ass I won't flinch again. Uh, Khan's got some repressive rage there. It's good talking anger. with you, Khan. I like it. I like it a lot. God damn it, little Khan. Yeah, yeah. All right. What else we got out here today? Uh, it's command console. I think we went through all this. I think we're good on that. That's all it. More information. With the ship here, PDCs. I, you know, I'm really curious. Let me, let me see. Okay, I, I gotta check. Um, PDC ammo. See, what's interesting is that, like they fired a bunch of PDCs, and the ammunition still the same as it was at the beginning of the game. Just saying. Just saying. You gotta update that texture, guys. So many details. There's so many details in this game, and like I, I swear I'm like I comb through it so hard. Um, kind of fun here. You know, notice she's not using her mag boots right now because they're it's probably they're under thrust. I should check in with the crew and see how everyone's doing. Looks like uh, Raylan got Raylan got all, all that crap off the deck there. Captain's chorus. Well, that's me now. I can go in here. I want in. It's nice to be in charge. All right, what do you got here? Um, start here. Got the journal. Flota. Cox was even more unhinged than I imagined. So you're the captain. So yeah, it's like the self. He's got his affirmations. Uh, <laughs> you are not a baby dick kibblehead. I've never seen you naked. Or not judge your manhood. <laughs> uh. The Martian is actually attracted to you, and you have chosen not to pursue your sense of dis I mean, this is like nuts. This is like super toxic nail stuff. Your drinking is not a problem. That's like, that's rough, man. Toxic masculinity is I would give finest. anything to unread this. That sounds about right. I would give anything yeah. to unread this. I love it. Look, it is pretty cringe. It is pretty cringe. All right. 
like, oh, we got the nice uh, bottle of scotch. It's got, it's nice because he's got this whole like, um, Circumstances have changed a lot since I last saw this bottle. Don't grab it here. Kind of like a name etched on the bo a box, which is kind of cool. Might as well give him some company. I like how they have it in a case in there too, so like it wouldn't it wouldn't fly around when they're under maneuvers. It's, it's secured. That's a big thing is have stuff secured uh, because it just it'll move around during from maneuvers and everything. That's why she kind of uh, in the previous episode she complained about. Um, Ray and having the puzzle, like the puzzle and the pieces, because it have it locked down. Let's take a look here. Uh, ship registration. Okay. New Artemis log. Ship registration. Independent vessel. Owner by Khan. So this is really interesting. The Khan owns the Artemis, not Cox. Cox is leases. So Cox, that means Cox is paying Khan to use it. Um, and this has been going on, it looks like, uh, She's had it for quite a few years. So this is 20, 30, 47. So she's had it for 15 years. Um, record spotting, conless flying, but she doesn't seem like she has patience for paperwork. And that's being the captain is having to do a lot of like, you know, bureaucratic stuff, checking the stuff, set up uh, jobs, set up registration, all that kind of crap. Um, that, that's what the captain does. The captain's in charge of stuff out, that the ship has to do outside of itself. That's what the, and then the XO is, takes care of inside the ship. Um, Gave him a solid ship and a talented pilot. Khan got to handle all the, got someone to handle the boring work and let her do what she does best, fly and square people. Sounds like a good, like a good relationship. That's a really interesting dynamic though. I like that a lot actually. I think that's a really clever uh, plot point. Um, all right, let's see here. Data cube menu. What are these? Decryption keys? Pushing voila. I knew Cox was paranoid, but spying on his crew? But he, he has like uh, decryption keys for everyone's stuff here, which is really interesting. Um, so basically, he's been spying on them. What are these? Decryption keys? Yeah. Pushing voila. I knew Cox was paranoid, but spying on his crew? Yeah, that's a bit extreme. But Cox is like paranoid. He's insecure is what we're kind of learning. They do make Cox out to be like a... I mean, he's, a he's a son of a bitch. He's a son of a jackass. I and mean, that's... You should be clear on it. Um, and he, he's not someone you really want to have in charge. I don't think we need block prep. What do we have out here? Med bay, mess hall, crew quarters. Um, let's go to the med bay first. He just can't help himself. Oh, he's doing his trauma counseling. Let's see here. Got it. Tablet. Say what you will about Virgil. But he takes his job as ship's medic very seriously. But he's looking at Cox. So Cox is 60 or 60. So 60 is not that old in the expanse. Um, Earther, the average Earther, and this is average, not, not like, uh, so like life expectancy, not like extreme. For Earthers and Martians is 120 years. Belters is like 65, 70. So Gary, Cox really isn't that old. Um, he would probably be retired at this point if he was, unless he was an officer in the, in the military or something. But hypertension, so he's got high blood pressure, hepatic steratosis. So basically, he has like he's just killing his liver. Um, but yeah, he seems to want to drink. This Virgil Marks signature, and he's got everybody's kind of stuff on here. Um, oh, so we can look say at what you will about say Virgil, what, what everyone has. He takes his bummer. No prior health issues. Minor bruising and rib contusions. Patient was on the ship's hull during sudden acceleration. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, need a modern injuries for any complications. Given the rate of the ship acceleration, patient is lucky to be alive. Fair enough. Twenty-eight. They age. They okay. So she's twenty-eight. I thought she was younger. Here, I thought she was twenty-four. Uh, okay, so she's twenty-eight, which means at the beginning of the expansion, she's thirty-one. Okay. Interesting. I thought she was younger. Okay. Um, Steo, twenty-five. Uh, tibial stress fracture, some repetitive stretch injury during MCR and basic training, no further treatment needed. So basically she has like, uh, her arms have some issues due to her uh, training as a Martian. A little PTSD due to her time at MCRN, has just meditation, which the patient seems receptive to. Okay. But she's only 25. That means she was only in the military for a few years. Uh, it sounds like she was in the military. She's been on the ship for like a few months. So it sounds like she was in the military for probably like six years. So like that's a pretty brief career where usually people are in for 20. Arlen, 
34. Okay, the, I didn't realize the twins were that old. They're 34, man. They're super immature for their age. Uh, bruises, minor laceration, seen during bar fight on Eros. Okay, Eros is at this point would be known for um, basically the place to go kick off steam. Uh, it has like casinos, brothels, uh, entertainment. It's not really like an industrial center or commercial center. Here's a topical antiseptic while receiving various treatment prof uh, profanities. Uh, pixie dust addiction and managed with medication. Okay. Uh, Toxicurodin, that's the stuff that keeps him off the addiction. Uh, discuss anger management. Fair enough. Rayan. Um, best, so they're doing the from Besta, which is kind of like a controversial. Um, there, that was the side of the first like big blow up um, Martian UN conflict. It was pretty public. Radial ulnar fractures. Patient suffered a broken arm while working on Vesta three years ago. No treatment needed. Um, transtibial amputation left leg. Yeah, because we did cut off his leg. Uh, I salvaged it. Treat for blood loss and vacuum exposure. Fit with prosthetic. Uh, corticosteroids and NSAIDs. I don't know what NSAIDs are. I know the corticosteroids are basically to kind of regrow his like, like they're there to help the joint, I think, but um, I don't know what NSAIDs are. non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Basically, make sure you don't like reject the, um, the prosthetics. That makes sense. Prosthetic hygiene. That's a big thing, man. I, I, um, I've had a few friends that have limb difference, whether born with it or um, due to accidents or something that happened in life. And you, you, the hygiene of it is very important when you have the prosthetic on. Um, yeah. Oh, the prosthetic will not uh, exasperate patients already poor hand-eye coordination. So this guy already has some issues with his coordination. Han, don't know the age. I love it. Uh, birthplace, Earth, unknown. It's got to be Texas, man. It's, it's got the Texas flag in her in bunk. Um, did it say we're Garrus? It just says Earth, okay. Unknown. Patient wears glasses, but is refused offers for an exam and expressed animosity at the mention of surgical intervention. Very interesting. Gunshot wound left arm, antibiotics ineffective due to strain and repeated hygiene burns. Exactly. They, the, you would have a lot of problems with that. Uh, you, it wouldn't matter because you just the, the wound would keep on just getting opened up over and over again. Uh, so amputation, shoulder uh, disarticulation, performed once sepsis was confirmed, fitted for a prosthetic. Same stuff, pain relief. Um, patient is hostile to questions about medical of a medical nature. Fair enough. All right, so that's cool. I, I actually missed out my playthrough last night looking through everyone's uh, medical records. The one thing I know about Virgil is that he's an excellent doctor. The rest is a mystery. What do we got up here? Reports. I like the displays here. It's a good job with graphics. I like I like how the prosthetic uh, thing here is now missing several. We we're missing a leg here. We're missing an arm over here. These have gotten more use than anyone could have. Pretty imagined. much, yeah. All right, let's go into Virgil's room here. Cox said Virgil was hiding something. Let's find out. Virgil grew up on Luna, but he's not like some in this. He actually thinks of Beltas as people. All right, so I'm gonna talk. This this actually was a part that kind of that kind of bugged me. Um, so yes, Martians and Belters are taller than the average Earther. Um, uh, because of the low gravity, you're you're not you're not having the compression of spine. But then you also have lower you have lower muscle mass then too, because you're not you're not constantly working out fighting against gravity, or as much gravity. Um, generation living in low gravity can lead a general increase in height and cranium size uh, without medical invention to cre increase bone density. So the cranium, what happens is builders have disproportionately large heads. Um, they didn't really do it in this game and they don't do it in the show because that special effects are very expensive to do. But what it is is that um, your your head is full of liquid. Like, like your brain is like a big mushy thing that's just inside of a, um, you know, bone. And so what happens is that pushes, and because like when I'm standing here, my, the gravity's pulling the liquid down on me. So it, it, it's kind of always in a general direction. And it doesn't really push on top of my head, where in space, it's pushing in all directions simultaneously. So your head will get bigger. Um, and so it says, however, belt bodies are also more resilient to high G burns need to transverse solar systems. Physicians in the belt face many challenges, but they also gain unique insight into the adaptability of the human body. Um, oh, the other thing too is low gravity will screw up your eyes over time because the the liquid in your eyes is going in all directions versus just down. Um, so this part here where it says they're more resilient to high G burns, um, this is both correct and incorrect in regarding to the Expanse lore. Um, 
I'll, I'll say that. So what it is is that belchers don't do well under high G burns. Um, so when you start burning one G, they don't really like it. It's actually much more uncomfortable for them than it is for earthers or Martians. Martians is uncomfortable for, but not as bad because they live under like a third of G or something like that, like half a G. But um, earthers, they can tell one G is like just walking around on the planet. It's not really a problem. Two Gs is kind of uncomfortable where like two Gs for a belcher will be uncomfortable. Their body will start misshaping and everything. However, though, what it is in terms of resiliency is that belters, because they're, the way their bodies are kind of set up uh, due to low G and the way that their cartilage is distributed, they actually like reform much quicker. Um, where our cartilage is very much in certain shapes because of gravity, their cartilage is more rounded. So it can go back to like any shape and it's okay pretty much. So this is kind of true and false simultaneously. Um, that's kind of interesting to read. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they're, it's not that they're resilient to the high G burn, it's that they recover faster from the high G burn. Uh, For an inner, he does make an excellent red kibble. Actually, I want to screenshot this real quick because um, I'm going to see if we can make this at home sometime this, uh, this week. I might try to make this actually. I might actually go get the um, these ingredients: red bean paste, flour, cumin, uh, garlic. Yeah, kind of cool. Actually, it's in the drawer here. Oh, oh, he's got an old school tablet. Looks like Virgil has some anxiety from his past. Glad to see he is managing it. You see his heart rate goes up, and he meditates a lot, which is really interesting. I think it's kind of clever that he's like has like way of like working through his trauma. Um, I like I like Virgil a lot, man. I'm really like Virgil. But basically, like Doctor Luna for supplies, uh, he just gets kind of you know he just kind of has hype. His, his heart rate goes up for some reason. Um, Miles said it in the evening, just some some help him sleep. Night, nightmare, of course, what the nightmare he remembers is about. Very high has a very high heart rate. Um, shortness of breath. Um, Arlen kind of messed with them, and then he Cox kind of put him in his place. Um, seems to have this issue with like these calling harm, causing harm to people, intrusive thoughts. Okay. So we get that he has like this um, kind of issue with. Um... Oh, we got a computer. Virgil's private computer. Must be something here. Going to hack it. We got our little. We got a little data cube hacker. Knock it out. Encrypted. But I picked up a data cube hacker in that ship graveyard. Should tell me what Virgil is hiding. Not to mention we have the password too. Hopefully this data hacker I found still works. Bingo. Apparently there's a lot Virgil hasn't shared about his past. Like his time as a UNN soldier. Austin University, okay. There he is, there he is on Luna. Um, he has a new identity, so Virgil's not his real name. Okay. So Virgil's not even Virgil. Whatever he's hiding, it was enough to make him change his entire identity. Got birthday. So we learned that he's about, he's in his 50s. Arrest warrant for one Thorsten Mayer, which I'm guessing is really. Now this was, this was actually one of the, um, I'm gonna screenshot this too real quick here. Um, this was actually one of the um, kind of cooler pieces. So if you actually go and it, it's kind of hard to see, but um, if you look here where the signature is, it's, it's signed actually like, I think it's signed S.A. Corey, which is James S.A. Corey is the name of the authors I and uh, Daniel used to uh, be authors of it. So I was kind of curious. I, I kind of want to pull that up and actually point that out to Daniel when I get a chance. Um, but it looks like he deserted it. Um, and uh, he's just he, he's uh, charged with desertion. Um, and this was lawyers he picked up. Um, 
And it seems like he's been under like a lot of distress. He's had a lot of issues. Um, and that he's a brilliant surgeon. He could do a lot, so. All right. Interesting. Not so he only did Virgil hide his UNN service and his real name, he's also wanted by his own government for desertion. I should try to get more information from him. Hey, I think I think Virgil's very interesting, but I also don't blame him for his uh his kind of style. What's going on with him? Out here. Um, let's go snoop through the crew. Well, yeah, let's go snoop through the crew quarters right here. All right, so we have uh. Raylan, oh, we got incoming log, what do we got here? Here, part of his log. So it's showing that people have been talking. Um, these are over a series like months, but incoming from Luna, very short. Uh, from series dock, that's just, they're docking there. Luna, um, I'm guessing that's the lawyers trying to contact uh, Virgil, is what it looks like. That's like, I think that's the initial the lawyers had. Uh, Vesta docks just means we're trying to like get set up on Vesta probably. Yeah. Probably random don't care to contact anyone. But yeah, most of these are just like uh it's kind of like docking stuff. Hey, we want to come and bring our ship there. God damn it, Rayan. <laughs> God damn it, Rayan. Great. Did they? I think I think it's in uh, Arlen's room. No, oh, Inya allowed. Yeah, I saw the OPA Navy logo there. Anderson Station changed everything. So this is this is a big reference to like a major event. You also notice at the bottom is an advertisement for the dating site, which is a uh, low gravity, no pressure. Um, but um, I hadn't seen this logo before. This Anderson Station logo at the top. And uh, who's that? John Haley, Series Station correspondent. And so Anderson Station Massacre is a big thing with Fred Johnson. Um, and basically what happens is this uh, Anderson Station, which was uh, actually owned by this organization here, um, which was like a helium mining situ like kind of refinery thing. Uh, the the owners of the station had lowly kind of like increased ta or like increased the amount of like money they were charging the belters that were living there while working there but not upping their wages so basically they weren't making any money and then also charging them more for air food and water and so the belters basically took the station over and spaced the governor and wanted to be wanted fair treatment. And so the UNN comes in after they space the governor and they try to negotiate with them and all this kind of stuff. And they won't, there's not really any negotiations going on. And what happened was um, they sent Colonel, they sent Fred Johnson, Colonel Johnson at the time to the uh, station to assault it. And he was told that basically it's a bunch of extremists. They're heavily armed. Um, Try to court, try to like you know work with them and everything like that too, and they wouldn't they wouldn't respond back. And he's told to assault the station, or he's told to like take care of it. And he basically in the in the TV continuity they just blow it up. They just hit it with like uh, they they basically they hit it with like missiles and sh and stuff. And um, what he finds out is that what 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 was hidden was that they were jamming the signal of the belt is on so that they wouldn't be able to communicate out and everything. And they were actually trying to surrender, but they actually managed to get a signal out, uh, bouncing it off of like uh, some sort of like dead, like that quasi dead relay. And the whole thing was live casted. So everyone saw these guys giving up and begging for their children, who their children were hypoxic, meaning they don't have enough oxygen in their brain, so their brain development's all screwed up. And uh, Johnson pulled the trigger and killed all these people. And he comes back as a hero but he finds out it was all bullshit and he leaves Earth. He renounces Earth citizenship and he actually goes on the belt and like is basically trying to die. But he gets picked up by Anderson Dawes and Dawes kind of uh, makes him into this OPA person 
Um, and it's really interesting. Uh, Fred Johnson is one of my favorite characters. Um, the UNN says that they, you know, there's reports that they did surrender, and that's kind of, there's footage of that. Um, and Johnson now is on Tycho Station, and he's been trying to help out the Belters and, and everything like that, too. Um, in the book, the way the Butcher of Anderson Station story happens is that they actually mount an assault on it to take the station back. And Johnson sends in, like, he's expecting, like, 80% casualties on his, on his part to take the station back. And he sends in, like, something like, uh, and they're talking like, like 4,000 Belters die in this incident. He sends in like, I think like 600 Marines and they only take like two, three casualties. And they find out that like, there's only honestly, maybe like 50 combatants on this station, like 50 people are actually armed and they're not even armed with good gear. They're armed with like pea shooters and re-rigged like industrial gear. They don't have military gear. And he ends up, they end up killing like everyone on the station, including like, like children and everything. And what he, what they find out after they get to the uh, the bridge of the station after they take it and kill everyone is that it's been broadcast live across the belt. Um, and the last piece of footage is basically Jonathan seeing the camera. And so it's 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 really devastating for him. And he tries to like basically commit suicide through going to the belt to be found. Um, arguably, too, uh, Butcher of Anderson Station too is also the first. It's not, she's not named in it, but it's the first chronological appearance of Drummer in the books, if you're curious. Um, she started with Dawes, so. But yeah, Butcher Anderson Station, very good story, very, very big event. All right, got Khan's room. I was skeptical of Virgil's maggot farm that he claimed would be useful in the event of an amputation. Now I'm hoping we have enough for Khan and Rayan. Yeah, medical maggots are big, man. Like it's uh, they use them with the first uh, episode of the Expanse te television show when the the guys get the amputation. They use those and they they eat the necrotic flesh. They eat the flesh that's dead. So like when you when you do do a um, uh, an amputation, there'll be flesh that doesn't like you're not really sure exactly which flesh is gonna live, which is gonna die. And so you put maggots on there just to kind of go through and eat the dead flesh, um, the rotting flesh, and that way like it's it's it, it's very precise actually a removal of that versus like oh just like going and Guess what's alive and dead? Oh, we got Cox's gun. Taking Cox's gun from him was as close to a captaincy ceremony as I'm likely to get. Yeah, that sounds about right. I wanted to check one thing in here too. They have half computers in here, do they? I'm really curious about their everyone's backgrounds too. Like I, I'm hoping to get more because um, we get a lot about Virgil here. I'm hoping we get more. And we got a lot about Con, I guess too. Con and Virgil really got exposed, which is cool because those are my two the two characters I really really like. All right, let's go check the mess hall. Whoever took the barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce is a lot braver or stupider than I am. Arlen, Maya, or Drummer. And she's from Texas. You don't mess with Texas people's, Texan people's uh, barbecue sauce. Arlen or Rayan, let's take a look here. Arlen treats Rayan like he's the weak one. But I haven't heard a single complaint from Rayan since his surgery. Yeah, Rayan's hard, dude. Rayan's a tough guy. Good medicine here. Techie boss man. <laughs> the other thing is too is like their little like crew quarters are honestly probably bigger um than like their actual like homes would be on Sirius Station or something or um like I still we got going on here. Oh right here. Oh yeah, this poster. Um, Maya and Vegel learned a lot of Lang Belta swear words in the past week. Khan seems to already know them all. Uh, I actually want to um, ask the guys from Telltale if they'll actually print this. This this should have been like an SDCC poster or something like that. If they do any kind of like uh, merchandising, guys, if, you, if you're out there, please like listen, um, Telltale, if you're out there, can you please, please print this poster so we can actually buy it? Even if it's just a little big thing like this or whatever, I would love to have one of these, uh, even with like the the tagging on it from everyone's kind of uh, thing here. So, uh, Nakaji Pasa, 
Will Wallace and a lover. Will Wallace is a really interesting one because it actually translates to like, uh, well is actually for gravity well. And Walla kind of means like worshiper more. Lover is kind of a vague one, but it's more of a worshiper. Um, Pashong Fong, fuck off, yeah. Uh, Pashong's Fong, uh, O Walla's fucker. Uh, Ding Man Dick is Dick Crooked. Um, yeah, Crooked Dick, uh, Ding Zong Man's Crooked Dick. It's like, you need your, like your dick's not straight. Um, uh, it kind of means that like, you're, you're so like crooked that you can't even fuck me straight. Like that's kind of, that's kind of what the, what it means. It's really fascinating, but yeah, they did a good job on I really want that poster, uh, Telltale, so please give me that for me. I really appreciate it. Hey Virgil, what you cooking, buddy? I like Virgil, man. Virgil and Khan, baby. I, I, now that I know that's the what the show should be. Virgil, it's time to get some answers from him. Uh, this, is a, this is a man that loves life right here. This is a man that loves life. Look at this guy. Dancing and singing and cooking. Good life. Hey, buddy. What's on your mind, Captain? You served in the UNN. As a medic, yes. It was the only way I could afford medical school on Luna. Hmm. So Luna, Luna, typically the people that live on Luna are much richer than people on Earth. Remember, Earth has 30 billion people and like the majority of them do have no jobs. There's no jobs to be had and there's no real like school past like basic education. Um, so if you went to Luna, that's a big deal. Like go in the military is a way to get out. And that's a classic story. I mean, my uncle did that. He, that's how he, he did his uh, medical education was through the military back during NAM. So, you know. Why did you desert? Good question. Because I was finding it harder and harder to live with myself. Being stationed in the belt, I was surrounded by people in desperate need of my help. But because of the badge on oh, my chest, just, I, love his gun on my back, Such a... I was their enemy. Oh, good looking. One day. It's, it's in line with a medical jacket you see in the show, too. Um, my friend Chris Keller that runs the Spans Geeks has much like a jacket like this. Not as not as nice as Virgil's, I'll say that, because Virgil's is chest kiss. Um, one day. Did you do something? No. I never hurt anyone. I never raised my gun. Not once. But what I saw taught me that there were two sides and I was on the wrong mm. one. I'm sorry, Captain. I hope that my actions on this ship can offer some amends for my past. That's okay, man. Um, mushroom powder. Let's get let's get him. Let's, let's, let's uh, drop the hammer and then. Uh, I found some mushroom powder for you to cook with. Help him out here a little bit. Yeah, man, go for it, dude. Step it up. Inhale. Bursting with umami. Interesting because this has one pound on it, and usually they would have kilograms for everything. But, um. Fascinating. One pound on the back. I, I'm, guys, I'm detail oriented, man. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Delicious. Yeah, I, I, my. my the, the greatest co compliment I've ever gotten running, I run Abrax Press, but I run the role playing game for the Expanse, um, is uh, from. Uh, Adam Bradford from Demiplane and D&D Beyond formerly and he's a big Spans fan and he's he loves how my games come off as like feeling like they could have happened in that world in that universe um, and the, he loves my details that drop here and there that kind of work so I'm very that's one thing I like about this game I'm trying to, I'm trying to pick up as many details as I can uh, so I can use them for my, my game too and kind of think oh that's a cool tactic that's a cool way so that's like, hey can I trust you buddy why should I trust you fair question you deserted one person. Because I sacrificed everything I have to get away from my past and start a new life here in the belt. Yeah, change something. Okay. Um, I don't know. Are you? I don't know if he's angry. I understand. I, 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 I feel like giving him shit about it is not going to do anyone any good here. Else I need to know. I expect That's kind of the thing, too, about, like, you know, being the captain or whatever. Of um, course. Is, like, you know, if you give, you can give someone shit, but what are you really doing Thank there? You. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, what Guess are you gonna? What are you gonna get as out as a leader? That's kind of my thing. Is like like leadership lessons and everything. Captain, like, are you really UNN past going to be a problem for us? No, that's cool. That's cool though. You, you can be in the UNN. Well, you got Mayo as like former Martian Marine. That means you were occupying my home. I know. We'll see you lie to us. No, nah, dude, we're, but he's also he's also wanted by the unit. So now we're on the same team. And I think he's genuinely like compassionate. I, desertion. I like Virgil, I'm man. Like, why, why am I? And he's your medic. The dude stepped like up. Both on the same side. The brother stepped up like he did. Make no mistake about it. Like, Thank you. you're like, yeah, hey, dude, dude uh, our crew is getting like dismembered out there. Uh, and you're cooking good stuff. And you're leading these meditative practices. Come on, man. Like, this guy, he needs a, give, him, give him a raise. He needs a raise. I love you, Virgil. All right. I like Virgil, man. Virgil's my, Virgil's my boy. I like Virgil a lot. That's hydroponic systems, too. This is a big ass ship, too. I think it's massive. All right, so we got the mess hall done, crew quarters are done, med bay, and there's airlock, and oh, we can cut out to... Wait, no, we don't need, we don't need to go this way. We can go to the... There it is. Cargo bay. We didn't get to see the cargo bay in... Uh, we didn't get to see it very clearly in the first episode, so it's kind of cool if you get to see the whole cargo bay and how big actually it is. Got a little music going on. Oh, here we go. Let's take a look at this. Containment vault. Saving this containment vault was an awful call to have to make. But without the fuel, ammo, and oxygen it contains, we could end up losing a lot more than just a leg. Yeah, they have like, these are all like rifles. Um, they have the Artemis logo on them, it's kind of cool. I want to take, I didn't get to take a look around here. What's also really cool too is you'll see here in the middle of the screen that little, those little like um, discs with the clamps on them, those are magnetic clamps. So that's how they keep the stuff secure. So like this, this box wouldn't float away. Although it'd be open, would it would pour out? But that's how you kind of keep the stuff uh, locked down. And here, are like the like you know classic clamps you'd see on any kind of ship. Um, how do they have this locked down? It might have a magnetic base or something. I don't know what these are. They're not warheads. I don't know what they are. Um, I like the thruster packs on these too. This car container. This is a clever setup, actually. I, I'm actually going to steal this idea for. I'm going to have the um, the Sinclair on our show get one of those. All right, we're going to do my last here. They got some rifles. Looks like some crates of stuff here. Cargo netting. Netting's a big thing too in, the, in like space travel. Is you want to net stuff up. You can't just put it on a shelf. You have to have it behind netting. Um, that's pretty far. Okay, there's Cox's little little brick cell. Let's go look around a little bit here. These look like some sort of fuel or some sort of something they need. Uh, what should I? Oh, okay. There's like the fuel pellets, some Baratus gas. I'm kind of curious if this would look different if you didn't salvage as much stuff. Nice little cargo container. There's the airlock. Something. I didn't see a. Um, I guess engineering's down below. There's engine room. What I, what I'm not seeing here. Uh, I don't know if it's behind that door over there or what is what's called a machine shop. Um, you would usually have a machine shop on a ship like this that would be a place to fabricate parts because like you don't you don't necessarily bring spare parts. You, you bring stuff to make spare parts. Um, so I'm kind of curious about that. Oh, we got over here. Waste storage log or water storage log. Excuse me. What do we got here? Water storage. 18% water. Restocks last 18 months, last five years. So yeah, they, they're not they're not restocking too quickly. Um, but the supplies in the extra body containment vault will keep us out of danger. They've diminished in the recent years, meaning the Artemis once had a larger crew. Um yeah, water so water is usually obtained out here, like through uh, glaciers, and then it get kind of you kind of are not glaciers, um ice rings and uh, comets. Not even not even comets, it's kind of just there's floating pieces of ice all over. You'll see a lot of like asteroids too on one side might have ice. Um, even if you go like towards Venus, you'll see asteroids out there that like one side is completely baked by the sun, but because there's no like transfer of energy to the other side too much, the other side has like nothing but ice on it. Kind of cool, no pun intended. All right, Cox. Um, oh, look Cox, at Cox doesn't here. seem too bothered by his demotion. 
Yeah, it looks like they just locked him in like a like one of these cargo rooms that has nothing of relevancy in it. Um, let's speak to him. Cox. Are you here to let me out? Then kindly fuck off, Captain. Oh, Cox. Kindness will get you everywhere, buddy. Kindness will get you everywhere. Dickhead. All right. Let's go ahead and, um... Guess what? I have a glove here. Hey, Cox. Give us a booze. Catch. Give you something to do. Here's a hobby. Your cargo. Okay. Yeah, that's like a, like a room you'd put like cargo that's like needs to be under extra security. That's, this embraces alcoholism, right? The word <laughs> you're looking for is thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna look at this room again real quick though, because like I'm kind of curious. No, I can't see one in there, but there's no crash couch in that, in that room where, like, he would die. Uh, based on the maneuvers they were doing, he would have been dead without a crash couch. So I don't know if they have, like, what they're kind of doing with him. Uh, they have another place for him. This has to be a machine shop or something in there. It's green. Oh, yeah, we can see. Honestly, I'm glad Maya finally got one. This Needed was it. starting to get set. <laughs> There wasn't anything Honestly, else there. Okay. I'm glad Maya finally got one. This was starting to get sad. Oh, it's barbecue sauce. Ready to drink. It was you? You stole Khan's barbecue sauce? This could be anyone's sauce. You can't pin it on me. Who are you going to believe anyway? Me or the crazy old pilot? The pilot. True. <laughs> Suicide mission. It's clear. What are you listening to? It's Martian music. You wouldn't like it. I have some comments about this too. I wouldn't listen to the thing. Um, no, try me. So listen to it. I'll decide what I like and don't like. Fair enough, right? Hey, as a music lover myself, I'll try anything, right? I'll listen to anything once. Got a little, a little visualizer. It's kind of cool. So there's some kind of interesting element to this, is that um, one of the things that's really interesting is that like, it is kind of a quasi-country pop song, which is a very kind of Martian thing. Um, there's a letter I keep. It's like a low, low-key kind of uh, country song. And with like the heritage of like, the Martians being like kind of cowboyish with the Texas, the Texan kind of history, it, it makes sense. Um, this would be in with this flavor. I don't know how long this song is though. I listened to it for a while. I'll give her, I'll give her like a, like a verse before I have to, I have to bounce on it, you know. Like the basic visualizer. I have a few comments on this though too in terms of like expanse oriented stuff and how like um, there's some lore elements to this but there's also some issues with um, the sound of the music actually I'll talk about that here in a second I also know there's an 
achievement with this? I don't know if you had to listen to the whole song. I'm kind of curious about that. It's kind of a cool experience, um, and that you're trying to share this like piece of culture with her. That looks kind of cool. You got a pure and clean on. You got your pure and clean guys. I don't know if this song ends or not. I'm kind of curious about how long it actually is. Alright, I'm done. I can't listen anymore that way. Well? Um, I'm kind of think it's very Martian. The last one was beautiful. I'll say it's very Martian. <laughs> Acoustic instruments? Yeah. And lyrics about war? Yeah. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. I didn't do that often last That's night. True. That's spot on. My mom used to play it for us on the guitar. Half the time she'd break down crying and not even finish it. It reminded her of my dad. It's funny. I hate my dad. I hate the army he died for. And I hate Mars. But I still miss it. Yeah, I can understand that. We got nostalgia for your, you know, stuff, what your kind of life you had. Khan seemed on. pleased with her prosthetic, particularly the extra feature you included. Oh, yeah, the lighter is pretty dope. That's good. Although you realize we just took the most unhinged person on the ship. And gave her a bionic skull crusher for uh, bro Cox. Cox is both on his person on the ship. Kill someone. She could do it without arms or legs. Sounds a force of nature. What you did in the debris field was incredibly reckless. You disobeyed my order, and you put the whole. Oh my God, you're fucking welcome. I was getting to that. Thank you. Anytime. I'll leave you to it then. Wait. Oh. Um. About that moment in the airlock. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. We shipping out now, guys. We shipping out. Are you out. feeling any better? I know you were pretty scared, given how tightly you were holding my hand. You know. See how it goes. All right. Uh. You held my hand. Fair enough. I'm pretty she did. sure you grabbed my hand in there. It's true. Oh, sure. We can go with that if you want. I'm just saying, I'm here if you need to talk. True. The only thing we need to talk about is your delusion of fantasizing about me. I get it. It must be hard for the boss Meng to express her feelings. <laughs> Especially Man. to the hot Martian Call engineer who can totally kick your ass. Not according to that scoreboard. That was a well-delivered line, actually. They did a good job on that animation right there, actually. My point is... There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Hmm. Even if you did clink helmets with me. Clink helmets? What is that supposed to mean? I think you know exactly what it means. Helmet clinker. Um, I don't know, so what? I'm trying to kiss, okay. Typical dumb Martian. You try to kiss a woman, but forget to take your helmet off first. Uh oh, here we go. If I did try to kiss you, there'd be no fucking confusion about it. Oh, girl, come on, get to him. You know, we could stand here talking about hands and helmets all night, or we could go back to my room and settle it. Summer's all contest, right? By fighting, by fucking. Um. 
I don't know, maybe explosive power, I try to keep up the can. I was like, fuck, let's just do it, man. Let's throw it in there. I settle it. Are you talking about sex? <laughs> only one way to find out. Oh, shit. Show up. That only matter what you said to her, she's the only way to find out. Fair enough, right? I mean, you know, Kamina's no, uh, you know, not for on the block type situation. Wow. All right, let's see here. Ah, Falota. <laughs> Maya's the one who stole Khan's barbecue sauce. That is not at all surprising, actually. All right. Hey, listen to the music again. I'm kind of curious. Let me see. Just bring it up. I don't know if you're hurt. Yeah, I think this kind of loops. Kind of interesting. All right, see here. Screw deck. Going on, climbing that ladder. What do you got here? Get some well deserved rest. All right, let's go. All right. We got uh, Maya Castillo's crib here, or do we go back to our room? If I sleep with Maya, the entire crew will know about True. it. Nothing Can't hide that stuff on the ship. On a ship like this. Vibrations move through the, the bulk as quite nicely. Worth all the drama. But he's a captain. You know, as the captain, it can be viewed as a little bit of uh, an issue here. So, but let's, we get a big choice right here. Go to Maya's room, go to your room. Man, that's a tough one. I, I'm i like, yo, this is like ship with Maya, Maya man. Be cool with it, go with it. Um, It might create some issues with the rest of the crew, but I think if you're honest about it, you'll be okay. Boom. Definitely. I actually better remember it. Ooh. They did a really good job on this animation here too. I was impressed by this. I, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, and whenever they have the characters kiss, they kind of hide it through like the hair and like the angling. Here they 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 went with it and they did a really good job animating um two models. When Cox you know. sat us down in the mess hall, I thought you were dead. And today in the airlock, I thought we were dead. I know. I'm just saying. You're not allowed to die on me, Kamina Drummer. Because I'm not losing the one person in the belt I give a shit about. Coming, guys. Give me a wake up, Con. What the hell? Okay, so they 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 come upon something out here. You notice the straps on the beds too. Usually, you're supposed to strap into your bed before you go to bed, before you go to sleep, so you don't do this basically or if like maneuvers start while you're sleeping you don't just slam into the ceiling captain hurt yourself you're gonna want to see this uh oh there's nothing on the map no record of any settlements so what the fuck is that some sort of asteroid with like uh something built into it it looks like next episode we're going to be delving into like an old abandoned base, which is super fun. Um, there's a lot of them. There's a bit of, there's kind of an, an expanse. It's like there's a variety of, um, uh, there's a variety of places where, um, the, uh, how do I put it? Like the, uh, places were trying to, they tried to occupy them, but they didn't really step up too well. Um, it didn't go exactly how they wanted it to, um, and such so all right let me go through my stuff here and see what i got uh con surgery i did have the crystal I found the aided con surgery very cool a lot of people didn't find the crystal that's too bad uh virgil's trust level uh drummer told arlen Rain that she trusts virgil true i mean I, I think you do a lot of people are like it's kind of interesting looking at this and seeing how people are like uh drummer told arlen that um she wasn't sure about virgil drummer and arlen Rain never discussed virgil okay but yeah but she trusts him uh, my surgery story. I heard the whole story. Yep, absolutely. I wanted to hear how it was going. Concerned about your crew member. 
uh, Con Bao story. She gifted the cigar and she learned about the past. Good. That's a really important key element here. I think the cigar is pretty easy to find in the first episode. Um, this wasn't as easy to find in the first episode, so I can see why that kind of plays out that way. The medication, dude, the medication is hard to find. You guys watched me there. I was looking at that for like 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, I'm really curious about the people that found it and didn't give it to them. I am, I am definitely curious about that. And the bulk village had no medication, didn't find it for them. Uh, Virgil Mushrooms gave them the powder. Why wouldn't you? People didn't give it to them. That's messed up. I'm really curious about that. They just didn't give it to them. His past, got to talk about his past. Good move. Nothing new. Didn't talk to Virgil about his past. Okay. Maya song. Only so many people listened to the song with her. A lot of people didn't. I don't want to say. That kind of blows my mind too. Uh, Scotch. Yeah, gave it to him. Uh, Cox wasn't bringing they killed him. I spaced him. I would like, give it to him, dude. Give it to the guy. Why not, right? And then Maya. Uh, a lot of people went with Maya. They slept with her. I, you know, I really could go either way on that. One is being the, um, the captain. Um, the other is like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's just, but like trauma kind of binds people. And I feel like Maya's kind of, I also feel like Maya's a little immature at points too, compared to speaking, but I was really curious about all that. Um, all right, go back to the main menu. That's it. That was episode two. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and jump back into my chat window here real quick. Close up my stuff. Um, yeah, you know, that was a... I really like this one. I, I thought this was actually a really good episode. Um, I have a lot to say about it. I'm going to be back on Monday with Amber again. Uh, we're going to both be in our cosplay and everything like that too. I'm going to probably wear my, my, my CPM cosplay, which is my security officer cosplay. Um, and really kind of like... Uh, like get into get into like how um we're going to kind of posit our new uh theories about the about what's going on uh, we might have a guest or, or two we're actually not sure yet but we're looking forward to that but we're going to reflect on the episode um this was a longer episode i thought this one was really well paced um i had a lot of fun with this one i like seeing the different ships i have a few complaints but they're nothing too big. Um, but yeah, this was a lot better pace. I had a really good action scene that I, I, I liked a lot. You had to kind of do a little bit of uh, platforming and everything, which is cool. Um, but I had a lot of fun with, with episode two. So I'm going to be back in two weeks. Um, I think I'll be back in two weeks. Let me double check my, I got to check my calendar because I go back to work. Like, or I go back to like my full time work, which is listed on professor. I'm actually not going to be able to play this on the Wednesday uh, in the evening as I, as I have been at this time, I'm gonna probably play it on either on Thursday or Wednesday afternoon if I get a chance. I'll probably play that Tuesday night just to like get that, that play so people can't spoil it for me. <laughs> That's a big thing. Uh, I'm big on avoiding spoilers by just going to see a movie or going to play the game quickly. But um, I think I'm gonna um, try to spend Wednesday um, I stream it, it has to be in the afternoon. Yeah, that's a tight stream. I, I really don't have the time for it. That's my first day back to like the semester and I, oh, it's too much. So I think I'm gonna end up streaming it on Thursday afternoon or something. And then um, we'll, we're gonna talk about the game. I think we're just, I think we decided to talk about it. Uh, we're gonna kind of move our days around just cause we're both, our schedules are just weird again. Um, but I had a lot of fun with Amber. Um, I'll, I'll, if you haven't checked that out, check out my YouTube channel. You can go to the, the, or the VOD is on uh, Twitch. We had a lot of fun talking about that. But I'm looking forward to episode three. Um, well, anyways, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, please, if you haven't checked out, uh, check out, and there's a link in the chat for my show, Everox Precipice, where we play the Expanse role-playing game. We're back on September 12th. I'm really, really excited about the, the crew's got a really cool storyline kind of going around right now. Um, and I have some catch-up materials going to be putting out pretty soon. Um, and I'm, I'm actually going to have a whole like recap ready to go, uh, or I need to record the audio. That's about it. Just together, um, record a video or something. And then, uh, but I'm keep on playing this guy uh, and everything, and keep on participating in the community. Hey, if you guys have questions about like the lore or the world of the expanse, drop them in the comments. Drop me a line. Hit me up on social media. Only play wizards anywhere, and I'll be happy to respond. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram uh blue sky uh i'm on the some of the expanse discords uh wherever you want to find me youtube twitch anything i'm good i love hearing from everybody and i love talking to expanse folks so 
everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I will see you all uh, Monday with Amber. See you later.